tit for tat in the teams. Amongst the batsmen, no Michael Vaughan for England, no Yunus Khan for Pakistan. Amongst the bowlers, no Andrew Flintoff or Simon Jones for England, no Show Bakhtar or Rana Navid for Pakistan. So those are the sides that line up today. Ian Bell gets into England's side as Marcus Truscothic and Andrew Strauss make their way down the steps. Was a bit lucky. It was uh, beautifully bowled by Sammy. That's a better shot. Got his foot to the ball, did Andrew Strauss. 30 for non England and no real great alarms in the pitch. A little movement, a little bounce, what you'd expect with the new ball. But I think it's a pretty good batting pitch. And if England don't make a good score, then they've only themselves to blame. And gone. Terrific quick bowling from Umar Gull. Plenty of bounce, moving the ball down the slope, and Truscothic drawn into a stroke that he wishes he hadn't played. That's wide. Probably too wide to be fiddling with. An uncertain looking Truscothic today. 16 he made, England 60 for one. Goodness me, yes, LBW. What a good bit of bowling from Abdul Razak. Andrew Strauss stuck on the crease, and today's feet have moved so well. Such a pity. Issues to consider, did it pitch outside leg stump? No. Did he hit it? No. Excellent decision by a top-class umpire, Simon Taufel, and Strauss made 30 at 60 for two. Pretty good start. Imagine, too, it's only his sixth first class innings of the summer. That's lovely timing. Oh dear, Peterson leaves it in his LB bubble. What a blow that is. No stroke offered, and Simon Taufel says that will hit the stumps. Hawkeye doesn't agree with Mr. Taufel. Kevin Peterson's on his way home. He made 21, England 88 for three. Good shot by Alistair Cook, just waited for that. Another good bit of timing. He's found the gap, Collingwood. There is a danger sometimes he can get bogged down. Gorgeous. Nice way to bring up your 50, Paul Collingwood. It's his fifth score of over 50 in Test cricket. He's really growing into his role here in the England middle order. Yeah, that's a fair comment by Simon Hughes. Collingwood's been given a responsibility and he's taken it. England were to end the first day with 200 makers in Collingwood and Alistair Cook. But neither of the innings were chanceless as Cook on 45 and the score on 196 for three offered this simple dolly to Canaria. Then shortly after tea, Collingwood gave a regulation chance to Akmal. At the time, he was on 79, the score on 251 for three, after which the England pair both went to their hundreds and took the score past 300. They made hundreds in Nagpur, they've now made them together at Lords. In a partnership of 221. England 309 for three at the close, 101 for Cook, 109 for Collingwood, who led the partnership, his running between the wickets was particularly good. Cook has confirmed what we knew, he is an anchor man. Some strong performances, particularly from Umar Gul and Danish Canaria. There was some intelligent bowling from Abdul Razak, who finished up with two for 60, but it was a day Pakistan will want to forget.
the ecstasy of the first day immediately became the agony of the second as Mohamed Sami found a perfect ball to deal with Alistair Cook. He added just four to his overnight score. Thus, after a four-and-a-half-hour wait, Ian Bell, who was recalled to the side, remember he hadn't played at all against the Sri Lankans, came to the crease attempting to carry on where Cook had left off. He literally did just that. Oh, it's a good shot. Yeah, pitched it up nice and straight, but he's worked that beautifully. Four more. Lovely shot by Ian Bell, and that's the tenth for the morning. 355 for four now, England. That's a terrible ball, and <laughs> it's give, been given the treatment by Paul Collingwood, got what it deserved. Another one, and the same thing, deja vu from Paul Collingwood. He's hit that one even better, and that brings up the 50 partnership between him and Ian Bell. Well played, Paul Collingwood, jamming down on that. A good attempted Yorker, almost Peterson-like in the way he managed to get that to the boundary. <laughs> but with a bit of fortune it is that on this near-perfect day at Lords, Paul Collingwood goes to 150. Fabulous batting. Wonderfully slick footwork, and then the commitment to the stroke. And best of all, the use of the hands by Paul Collingwood. Oh, that's a beautiful bit of bowling. Well bowled, Danish Canaria. At last, he's got his man. He has been a little bit unlucky, really, through this bowling spell, because... He's had a catch that wasn't given, he's dropped one off his own bowling. Finally, he's got Collingwood out, lured him down the crease, out of his ground. Beautiful work from Cameron MacBob. What a great innings from Paul Collingwood. Listen to the applause. 186 runs, 441 for five. Ian Bell's got to 50 with a typically neat clip off his pads. Now, can Bell progress? Oh, yes, he could progress all right. He went to 50 from 105 balls, and confidence and class began to ooze from every pore. Bell on 99. Nobody back on the boundary. He's trying to find the gap. He does. He gets to 100. His name will be writ large on the home dressing room wall. A stylish century by Ian Bell. And what a statement that is, too. Ignored by England for the first part of this summer in the test matches. He's saying, omit me at your peril. And I think that is the signal for the end of the innings, too. A very sensible decision from Andrew Strauss. A nice decision for him to have to make, actually, too, having won the toss to be able to declare innings closed with 528 runs on the ball. Three England centurions, two. What a commanding position England have set up in this match. The innings really anchored round that superb contribution, that well-crafted 186 by Paul Collingwood. Cook, also 100, perhaps less convincing, but also an accomplished innings from Ian Bell there at the end, 100 not out, and the... Pakistani bowlers toiled. Canaria, 52 overs, 3 for 119, was probably the main threat. Second string opening bowlers were really fairly unimpressive. It's a flat pitch, but you sense that England on this pitch might, with so many runs to play with, pose a few problems for some fairly inexperienced Pakistani opening batsmen. 19 overs left in the day, and in that time, they'd certainly want to knock two over, if not three. Out. Simple as that. How many times have we said about Hoggard today and Harmison in particular not pitching the ball up? Pitch it up, 
drew Buck forward, and it was as simple as that. It was a perfect dismissal. Butt goes for 10, 28 for one. Out. Oh, what a fantastic catch. For a moment you thought that must be out, and then it's going over his head. Oh, a sensational catch. That's all the difference. The bowlers get the edges, but then you've got to catch them. Makes a tremendous amount of difference if you catch everything going. Faisal Likbal goes for naught, but no shame in that delivery or the catch. And 28 for two now, Pakistan. Liam Plunkett, and now he knocks over Farhad on the brink of the close of play. Perfect from Plunkett. 33 for Imran Farhad, 65 for three now, Pakistan. And that proved to be the final strike of an enthralling day for English cricket. 462 the difference between the sides, all set up by England's batting, led by Paul Collingwood. The third day of the Lord's Test, that's the Saturday, belonged to just one man, to Muhammad Yusuf. He was 20 not out overnight and he remained unbeaten for the whole day, reminding us of his commitment to the cause and his lovely natural style. Well played. Harmison's always going to get steeple bounce and he got right on top of that, did Yusuf? Right up on his toes and just steered it past Gully. Up high, you see. Shot. A bit Caribbean ish, that one from Mohamed Yusuf. Nonchalantly flicked away by Yusuf. It's a very good 50. In fact, I'd say yesterday evening that Muhammad Yusuf played as well as you'd expect anybody to play given the circumstances. Well, he's continued that this morning. That's clever. That's clever. Just got his length wrong there, Plunkett. Use it very quick onto anything over pitched. It was fairly deliberate from Mohammed Yusuf. Possibly Strauss got a hand on that to stop it from racing to the boundary, but it still makes it over the line. That was nicely played by Mohamed Yusuf, and that's taken him to 100 if he can get back for three. In fact, it's gone all the way for four. And a gorgeous 100 by Mohamed Yusuf. Stylish. He kisses the ground. Of course, he's a Christian who converted to Islam. It's his 17th Test Match 100. It's a really accomplished innings, maybe the most fluent 100 of the match so far. He's almost crept up to 100, almost unnoticed. Pulled away by, that was too short from Collingwood. Yusuf dispatched that with disdain almost. That's fabulous, great use of the feet. And he really does throw his arms at the ball, that's gone many a mile. Gosh, this is a good innings from Yusuf. First six in an innings that's also contained 17 fours. Ready. 
Bad ball from Hoggard. That was really a gift down the leg side. Oh, he's down the pitch. He's just given it one hell of a belt. He just belted it, hasn't he? He doesn't really play the cricket shot, drove it. He's just so confident, he's Yusuf. Brings his 150 up. Oh, what a fine innings. Oh, what a good shot by Yusuf. That wasn't such a bad ball at all, but he's in great touch. It's the 50 partnership. Oh, there's a lovely stroke. Splendid way to close proceedings. Yes, just two added to that total. It finished at 409 for seven. Muhammad Yusuf unbeaten with 185. That was a, the most marvellous innings from a top-class player. And look at the threat that hangs upon England overnight. Shahid Afridi still there. Seven balls he faced. He didn't get off the mark. They all put plenty into it. Hoggard not at his best. I don't think any of them were quite at their best, but there was no lack of effort. And Steve Harmison did, late in the day, show signs of his old rhythm. That's the difference then. Pakistan 119 behind England. The fourth day awaits us. Oh, that's it. Very good bowling by Steve Harmison. You've got to pepper a freedy with the odd short ball because he'll go after it. I think he meant that. Yusuf just flailed at it and just shot off. No third man again. England very rarely employ a third man. Shot. That's a Freedy at his best. You pitch it up and he hits it. He has the most amazing physique. Such power when he hits it right in the meat of the bat. could be out that could be out yep well thought out England Hoggard pitched it up Strauss put the man back at mid off a bit three quarters away back Ian Bell took a very neat catch well, there's a short innings by Afridi I wouldn't say it was sweet it was fraught with edges and top edges a couple of hits Shahid Afridi out for 17 from 20 balls Pakistan 435 for eight out I think that's a fairly straightish ball maybe just held its line very well ball Matthew Hoggard thought it wouldn't take long for Gull to be got out he's gone for naught 436 for nine now going down the wicket he's just streakily avoided the keeper and that is a very streaky way to get to his double century the fourth of his career, he's going to kiss the ground again. He should have been kissing the pitch, really, because that's the thing that's played into his hands as much as anything. It's been the most beautiful wicket and the most beautiful innings to match it. Yeah. That's out. Harvison's got his man at last in his 30th over. He's bowled a succession of excellent deliveries this morning and finally he's ended Mohamed Yusuf's marathon innings on 202 and also polished off the Pakistani tail as well. 445 all out they are now. He's dominated the Pakistan innings of 445 by the double century to Mohamed Yusuf. Insamamal Haq also a good contribution there. Cameron Akmal, don't forget him either, 58. But England this morning really did well, polishing off the Pakistan lower order. Hoggard and Harmison sharing the wickets this morning. Hoggard in the end with three, Harmison with four. And he didn't go for more than 100, Harmison, so he did well. Pakistan only 83 behind. Intriguingly placed match with England to come out and bat again. Thrashed 
away for four by Drusgothic. What a start that is. Beautifully hit by Andrew Strauss, and it might be a signal of England's intent. Oh, I think that's out. An inside edge from Marcus Strauss. Gull's got his man. A bold young man, he's got his tall, lanky, got a little bit of uh, pace, a little bit of bounce, and Trescothi just drags it onto his leg stump. Trescothi, 18, and England, 38 for one. That is out. It's a hopeless shot from Alistair Cook. It's such an uncharacteristic shot. Normally, his judgment is good, but uh, this time he's, well, he's trying to pull a ball that simply isn't there. Consequently, he has no control over the stroke and falls to a catch by Mohamed Yusuf and Cook made just four. At last, Kevin Peterson's away. And in dramatic style, that's the 14th ball that he's faced. And England lead by 161. Short, cut away beautifully by Strauss, that's 50. That's the shot he loves to play, he's always looking for anything dropped slightly short outside of stump. He's a stocky player, a very fine cutter of the ball, and that's another test 50 to his record. Whipped away again, what a shot, that is a brilliant shot. Oh, that's a good shot, lovely use of the feet. They've just been playing the ball around, taking the singles out of these two England batsmen. Peterson there, not settling for that for too long. Well bowled, very well bowled, Shahid Afridi. Too quick in the end for Peterson, maybe Peterson went too early. Brilliant work though from Afridi and from Cameron Akmal, who had big bounce to deal with, and the knowledge that lingers in the back of the mind that it's Peterson. 41, he made, it's 141 for three. That should be the end of Paul Collingwood. It is. A wicket for Danish Canaria. Salmon butts the catcher. And that was the stroke of a man who has a weary mind. You sort of feel you've given it away a bit with a dismissal like that on the back of such a big score in the first innings. And now he'll leave the field frustrated with himself. Just three for Collingwood. It's 146 for four. Fabulous shot by uh, Ian Bell. Really took his time to play the stroke. <laughs> Strauss will earn five, and that's handy when you're on 93. shot from Ian Bell. Lovely free swing. 50 partnership between this pair. He has 99. He faces Danish Canaria. Oh, heavens above. Oh, I'm afraid that that's outrun out. I think Strauss has made a hash of it. And so does Ian Bell. Inzamam is the fielder. And he wins by a fair old margin. 286 England lead by now. 28 for Bell, it's 203 for five. Now, for all the drama, Strauss still has 99. Yes, there it is.
Andrew Strauss becomes the first England captain to make 100 in England on his debut as captain. <laughs> Little thin edge, yep. Geraint Jones goes for 16, and he'll barely believe it. Only two overs left after this one till the close of play. Questions are being asked about his batting. Yet again, he's got out, went in. Oh, dear. One does feel for him. 16 he made, it's 250 for six. That's a lead of 333. Good catch. Strauss goes two. Again on the close of play. A double strike for Pakistan. It's been a fabulous innings, this, from Andrew Strauss. Fabulous. And you could argue that his dismissal actually doesn't alter the game in that England really ought to declare overnight. That, of course, is another subject for the moment. Lords will stand to applaud England's captain back at the pavilion. 128 made by Andrew Strauss. A long and absorbing day of test cricket. It's had a little bit of everything. And England very strongly placed at the end of it. 258 for seven then at the close. Strauss is 128. The excellence in that performance, though Kevin Peterson was a thrill a minute while well, uh, he was out there. 28 for Ian Bell before the unfortunate run out. Two for Umar Gul, three for Danish Canaria and one for Shahid Afridi on a pitch that is turning and bouncing and even bouncing a bit low for uh, the seam bonus. So this match is beautifully poised. England should surely declare overnight their 341 runs ahead with a day left to play. On the fifth morning, all the talk was about Andrew Strauss's declaration, but it didn't come overnight. He was quite cautious, even with a lead of 341, and it meant that Matthew Hoggard and Liam Plunkett came to the crease to bat rather than bowl. It was a useful little period for Liam Plunkett, who hit a boundary or two, and when he was out, caught off the bowling of Abdul Razak, the declaration came. All of which left Pakistan with an unlikely 380 to win the game. England, of course, were on the hunt for 10 wickets and they got off to the best possible start when Matthew Hoggard trapped Salman Butt, LBW first ball of the innings. Then in the 13th over, he claimed the second wicket of the morning, Imran Farhart, caught by Collingwood with a score on 33. That dismissal brought Mohamed Yusuf, fresh from his first innings double hundred to the crease, and along with Faisal Iqbal, he provided stability. England had failed to capitalise on their good start, and the game headed for quite a predictable draw. It was the Pakistan captain, Inzamam ul Haq, who had the last word. And that strike through extra cover gives 50 to Inzamam ul Haq. And it also gives him a record. He is the first player to make nine consecutive scores of 50 against one opposition. England are on the wrong end of it, but this is a fine player right at the pinnacle of his performance. Fitting that the last truly relevant stroke in the match came from Inzamam ul Haq. He is a fine batsman and he has seen Pakistan safely through to the draw. He shook hands with Andrew Strauss, and things ended with Pakistan 214 for four, Inzamam himself unbeaten with 56, and Abdul Razak with 25. Credit, too, to Faisal Iqbal, who didn't find it easy out there, but stuck at it, and Mohamed Yusuf, who also made 48. Two for Hoggard, two for Panasar. Nothing there for uh, Steve Harmison. I guess that's the real surprise for England. They needed three or four wickets from the big fella were they to win the game. The match is drawn then, a good match between two even sides, though 